Michelle. This is my so-called handmade life. I have a blog by the same name and that's my name on Instagram. On Ravelry, I am Mamatronic. This is a knitting, crochet, handmaking, whatever I feel like talking about kind of podcast where I ask questions and discuss things and you respond in the comments, hopefully. And then that informs what I talk about in the next episode. And we're trying to make it as much a conversation as possible via a YouTube vlog. I do have a Ravelry group. Everything is linked in the notes, by the way, but the Ravelry group hasn't been used very much for the last year or so. A lot of you can't use Ravelry at all now. So I am going to open up a thread for stash busting the new year. That's the knit along I'm hosting. It's very informal. Anytime you use stash, you want to try to use stash up, hashtag your items. You can drop them in that Ravelry group so that we can talk about it and you guys can discuss each other's projects. But the hashtag is also going to be used on Instagram. And of course, you can always discuss what you're making here in the YouTube comments. And I do encourage you, if you are interested, say, in a knit along or a topic, to read other people's comments and discuss back and forth with them in the YouTube comments because you know YouTube and Instagram and Ravelry don't all overlap. YouTube is sometimes the easiest way for someone to participate. I'll have like a, I don't know, some kind of prize at the end of this, but it's not gonna be anything major. Last episode, I talked to you about my guilloche pullover by Albina McLaughlin, and several of you have knit her patterns and a lot of you like them. I think once people find out about Albina, they kind of become super fans. Like they love everything she makes. I'm one of those people. I've only knit a couple of her patterns, but I have a ton of them in my queue. And I have uh, quite a bit of knitted in yarn earmarked for some of Albina's designs. Um, Virginia also has guilloche in her queue. And I would like to know, Virginia, what yarn were you thinking of using for your guilloche um, and what color? I can just see that looking just really lovely on you. I think Albina style, um, there's kind of a vintage flair to me, to her style, and so many of your designs make me think vintage. There's a sweetness, um, just a classic look to them. I think that you would look great in the guilloche. I mentioned in my blog post on guilloche that it totally makes me think of the 90s, like not like pump up the jam 90s, but like the clothing catalogs that I would look through or things I would look for resale. I was like a teenager and that's kind of what I was forming my style. And I would look through like the Tweeds catalog or Jay Peterman or something. And I was always drawn to classic looking knits that look like something vintage you would find in a shop. Of course, I couldn't afford any of that. But once in a while, I would be lucky and I would maybe find a little cardigan, you know, at a thrift store or something. Uh, shawl collared sweaters were a big one. Um, like sweaters with lots of positive ease, striped, lots of striped sweaters. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it was just kind of fun to look through Albina's patterns. It just feels, it resonates so much with that, the beginnings of me forming a style, which I, I don't know, if you could see the bottom half of me right now, you'd be like, hmm, style? I don't know. Karen and Heather have both knit some of Albina's patterns. Heather, you were not joking. You have knit a lot of her patterns. Uh, they're so nice so many of her sweaters and oh my gosh the basic integrated heel sock a lot of them uh it, that makes me excited to try the integrated heel amanda and virginia both have song and dance in their queue uh, song and dance was one i pointed out last week uh, it had like bands of color work sort of like stripes of color work and it was among some of the first patterns i saw doing that uh, it's kind of common now in designs, but Song and Dance had a, a really interesting color palette. And I can see like if you are stash busting in the new year, 
that would be a good pattern if you had just say 100 yards, 200 yards of worsted weight. Um, that's not enough for a one or two color sweater, but it's totally enough if you do lots of different colored bands or stripes of color work in a sweater. Okay, uh, Mina also did um, two LLF pullovers and has uh, her uh, intentions of knitting a third. I'll show you LLF. That stands for Long Lost Friend. Um, this is another great classic striped sweater. Again, totally looks like something I would have wanted to wear or maybe would have borrowed from my brother in the 90s, like a, a striped sweater, classic crew neck with a bit of ease. <clears throat> You mentioned, Mina, that it's a kind of sleeve that looks set in, but is actually knit on the sweater. And uh, I looked it up to see if it was afterthought or contiguous. It's a contiguous sleeve. And my very first contiguous sleeve was one of Albina's patterns. It was my first knit from her, my Fisherman's Muse, which I might show a picture of here. Still gotta get that blog post up on Fisherman's Muse, but it really worked well. I wasn't sure. I wanted a little ease so that I could layer. I plan to wear that to like go hiking or riding a bike when it's cold. And uh, it's an in knitted in, so I probably would need another layer, um, uh, even sleeves, just so that as I my body warms up, it wouldn't itch. Um, I was not sure if I could make a good looking contiguous sleeve with a bit of ease. It came out perfect. I was so pleased with it. Um, Jennifer Beale's patterns also got some love in the comments. Maureen is set to knit Mount Pearl as soon as she gets the yarn. And I'm just wondering, are you going to be stash, stashing down in the new year, Maureen? Because how long does new yarn have to sit before it becomes stash? And you can tell yourself you're being frugal by using your stash. I'm thinking like a month, and after a month, I can look at something new and say, oh, look at me, I'm using old yarn. Aren't I frugal? I can just pat myself on the back. All right, so what I'm wearing right now is my sleeveless, Spring League sleeveless hoodie by Alexandra Tavel or Two of Wands. She did her League Series Cal uh, a couple of months ago and she's got like four league pullovers of some sort, like long sleeves of different weight, a t-shirt style one, and then this one is a sleeveless hoodie. And I made it with extra ease so that it really could be worn as a very, you know, it's got the sweatshirt detail, the drawstrings, the hood, like sportswear. I wanted it to I wanted to be able to wear it as such. I wanted to be able to put it on over a sweatshirt if I'm outside and it's cold or over a t-shirt like this. And it is knit in um, partial stash, uh, her Color Theory yarn with Lion Brand. So I had like a skein and a half in this caper colorway left over from a baby blanket. So I just ordered a couple of more skeins and uh, I'll flash on the bottom how many skeins it took me to make this, but um, it was fun. And I wasn't sure, I, I, I told you already, I was a little on the fence about using 100% acrylic. How much would I wear this? It's actually very lightweight. It feels like a super light kind of sweatshirt, like not the fleece lined kind, but the more um, lightweight sweatshirt material. That's what it's like, and I have gotten compliments. Like the first time I wore this, I got two compliments. Someone said, where can I Amazon that? <laughs> I was like, you can't. I mean, you can buy the yarn possibly. But let me stand up and show you as much as I can of this design. So yeah, I've got like, look, <laughs> very, very sporty looking today. Um, You see extra ease. I really enjoyed the fact that I really like this drawstring. Look, it looks like real drawstring, you know? Like it's the real deal. I liked doing it in a regular, like natural white drawstring color. This is cotton stash yarn. 
See, I did stash bust. Um, it's just cotton yarn that I had left over from something, maybe dishcloths, and I made it into my drawstring. All of this drawstring was fun to make. The casing for it, nice, easy make. And then I find that you don't have to do any kind of edging. It rolls under and that actually gives it even more of a sporty kind of cut off sweatshirt look. Cause you know how your cut off sweatshirts will do. Let me go let my old man out. All right. When an old dog says gotta go, he's gotta go. So um, this was really enjoyable to make. It was really easy, quick knit. Um, I did start to use a special um, bind off, uh, a special stretchy bind off of some sort. And then I changed my mind and I did a regular one one rib, knit pearl rib bind off because any kind of, like sometimes a stretchy bind off is necessary, but this is acrylic and it has just kind of a looser floppiness to it. It's more drapey. I found that regular 1-1 ribbed bind off held it in better. I thought it, it was a better look. Um, so I love the drawstring. I like the generous size of this one. I did a size medium. So you can see if I wanted something more fitted or even more cropped, I could have done a small, but I wanted something to layer to actually like do things outside, like sporty things. Oh. Can I say sporty again? Um, I also like this color. This is a nice, this is like Adina, you were saying you love um, like that brown, maroon type brown color because it goes with your favorite color, which is olive. Yeah, this is one of my favorite colors. This is a bit of an olive, like caper colored um, green. I like this. This is the yarn I showed you I got last week. I had leftovers from this which was obviously um, unnecessary, but I wasn't sure how much yarn it would take. I had a leftover skein from this that I'm applying to some more for a baby blanket that I'm going to knit. Another one of Alexandra's patterns that I would like to make, and this would be a good one for a stash busting in the new year, her Winston tweed tie. So I still have, you know, um, I have, no, I'm going to use the leftover skein from this in that baby blanket, but from the, the one, the baby blanket already made, um, it had this color caper and admiral. I have some admiral leftover and I want to make this Winston tweed tie. So it can be worn as a tie or it can be like a hat band or worn a little more open just kind of loosely under a shawl collar. I think it's really cute. Uh, it makes me think a little, I mean, it looks like a, a tweed tie. It makes me think of the ties that I had to wear. My, one of my first jobs was as a hostess at the Olive Garden and we had to wear these maroon ties. And I'm thinking they might've been knit ties. Maybe not, I might be confused, but I had to learn how to make a Windsor knot and I could never do it. So I had somebody do it like around me, stand behind me and do it. And I would just loosen it and take it off every day and leave it in my car to go to work and put it back on. It's kind of what this makes me think of, but in a really cool nice looking way. Uh, this just takes two skeins, one of, you know, each color, your regular color and your contrast. And that would be a fun make. That would also be a nice like last minute gift for somebody. So have any of you made two of wands patterns? Um, I really enjoy the fact that she pretty much does all of them in very affordable yarn that you could get at Lion Brand. And I like that approachability. Um, but you know, you don't have to use acrylic or Lion Brand yarn. Though the LB collection, like, they do have like all natural, they have animal fibers, like 100% wool in some of their LB collection yarns, or, you know, like woolies is partial wool. 
Um, I, you've seen me knit several of her things, not always in acrylic or acrylic blend, but I just wondered, have any of you tried her patterns? Um, she's pretty hard working. She's always putting collections out. And uh, I, I admire, even if it's something I maybe wouldn't knit, I admire, um, I don't know, the approachability of it. And that so many of her patterns she does offer free on her blog. If you really, you know, are struggling to make knitting work while you're, you know, trying to work with your budget, those free patterns plus the availability of affordable yarn for her patterns is it's a neat combination. It's I just kind of respect that that she does that. So let me know if you've knit any of her patterns or if you have any like you've been thinking oh i really want to do this they're a good option for stash busting too and you wouldn't have to buy even a pattern if you already have the yarn because so many are free on her blog i don't know if you guys have noticed but wow this like christmas season so many more free patterns on ravelry a lot of them offered by um different makers for like advent like freebies and then some are just free all the time i am seeing so many that i'm hashtagging or i'm uh, tagging on ravelry with stash busting and i need to get a bundle together in fact i'll, I'll do that and i'll link in the notes and on my blog post with these notes i'll link the bundle so that if you can go on Ravelry, you'll be able to see some ideas of stash busting patterns. Some of them are free, not all of them though. Um, when I say stash busting, clearly a lot of us have sweaters worth of yarn in our stash, but a lot of us just have a little bit here and there and uh, we need to find a way to make it work. And that's the kind of thing I typically hashtag as stash busting. So um, that little extra skein of this, did I show you, did I turn for you guys? I mean, you can basically see, I'll have photos. I'll flash some photos. I, I was kind of lazy taking photos of this one, but I do have a few. Um, the spare skein from this sweater I'm using for a baby blanket. I showed you it has a rainbow pattern on it. I just set that aside until the first of the year because we had a lot of stuff going on recently. Christmas is always a busy time and the kind of busyness changes, you know, from when you have little kids that are involved in pageants and plays and things. It's not like that now, but we've had some exciting things. Let me let the dog back in. Little footprints, <laughs> little footprints. <laughs> okay, um, I'll have to clean those later. <laughs> we, you know, have had, my husband had a birthday, so we always, you know, do something for that. We celebrated our son's graduation from college and that was exciting, but we don't live in that area anymore. So we had to rent a Airbnb and a lot of family gathered there and that was just a few good days of visiting and excitement i'm really um i'm relieved for him to be done with his bachelor's um but i was really i just sat there and i watched how my children uh, my daughter my son and her husband my daughter's husband how they interact with the people around them with new people with elders in their family and i just felt so proud of i don't know the people they are so happy to know them there's a real generosity of spirit in them i don't know it did my heart so much good besides the obvious excitement of yay you know you graduated you did it graduating during covid uh it was like a lot of courses made extra hard because they were being taught for the first time online by someone who really didn't know how to do it and all of the struggles that so many students had they were going on so i'm really proud of him for getting through and um i don't know just a lot of the 
the growth I've seen in him over the years, I'm just proud. But aside from that, I just really took a moment to enjoy my children and I count my son-in-law as one of our kids. Yeah, we didn't raise him. <laughs> we didn't make him that way. I mean, we didn't make any of the kids the way they are. They are the people they were meant to be, but I'm just so glad to know them. So that was kind of a special thing. But because of all of that activity, I have not touched any of my sweaters that I was working on. You know, I had three. Um, all these exciting things that were going on, I just really couldn't handle more than socks that I could easily do without looking at a pattern. We were doing a lot of traveling and just had a lot of things happening. Company at our house, birthday celebrations. And one thing I noticed about myself is that even when it's happy, exciting things, there's an element of stress to it. And I'm catching my body just sort of kind of locking up, tensing up like, I'll relax when everything goes back to normal. Even though it's an exciting thing, there's still an element of, I don't know, like maybe bracing for a roller coaster ride or just holding your breath while something exciting happens. And I think my goal, personal goal for the next year is to kind of figure out when that's happening and just kind of get myself to relax more because I'll notice I'll have like issues with sleep or my stomach bothering me. And I also think this has to do with the time of life I'm in. But even happy, exciting things affect me with more of a feeling of stress than they used to. So this week before Christmas, the week before Christmas, I'm trying to just take things kind of easy I'm doing this podcast, I'm um, trying to make sure I eat right, get enough food in me, drink enough water, get enough sleep, all of that. I mean, you know, we have these exciting times in life and we want them, but I just kind of want to get over that this year. Um, it made me think of the comment about the Boundaries book, which really has nothing to, I mean, it could, I mean, certainly Boundaries issues could make me feel that way too, but maybe not in a positive way, but this was all positive stuff. Uh, a few of you mentioned that you need to read that Boundaries book, and I wanted to tell you about an author Pam told me in the comments about her name is Nedra Tawab, and I'm gonna have a link to that. I haven't read this book, but she said it's similar to Boundaries and a very good book. So I am interested in it, not necessarily to help with my um, perceiving even exciting things as a, an element of stress, but just in general. I think it would be an interesting read and I wanted to make sure I mention it on the podcast, though it's in the comments. Um, I ended up bringing my selfish socks. First of all, I finished and wove in the ends. I don't think I showed you the finished socks. These are with leftovers of my pumpkin spice latte colorway from Mustache Yarns. So the first ones I knit were pretty um, tall. I had quite a bit of yarn left, so I made little crew socks, like shorter socks, you can see right here. And then I just did some silly things. Um, because this is an irregular stripe, I didn't feel like I had to do an afterthought heel to keep the stripe pattern looking good. I did make my heel flap when it changed to one large chunk of white. You know, I went ahead and did that. Most of it, the flap is made in one color. And I think that has a bit of a patchwork look to it, which I like. And then I did this weird like ribbing in the arch of the foot where it wouldn't interfere with the way it fits. Um, I do think like if I had done a slip stitch ribbing instead, it actually would have given it that contoured sock look that a lot of sports socks have. But anyway, I was just fiddling around and it was fun. It's a fun knit and it's always easy with striped socks. Once you have one to fit, you know you can make the other fit by just doing everything at the same point in the striping pattern. It was fun. I was just practicing different things with this. And then I cast on my selfish Christmas knit, which I felt so weird 
typing selfish and Christmas right next to each other. But I mean, you get it. I knit a baby blanket. I knit some baby washcloths. I'm knitting another baby blanket and then another baby blanket. I'm not completely selfish. I don't really feel like I need to explain that, but I know a lot of you kind of wonder, is it, is it wrong to knit for yourself at Christmas? I worked on the, um, let me find them. Oh yeah, I've got one finished. My Mary Kitchmas socks. This is a Nomadic Yarns colorway. The striping one is, and then I did contrast heel, toes, and cuff in her time colorway, which you can see, this is a very similar color. I really do love this green. And these colors together are so nice. Look. So good. By the way, as I think about how you know, I'm doing a selfish knit because I've been doing a lot of baby gifts. I wanted to congratulate you, Leah, on your new little one that's coming. I'm so excited for you. Um, and you had mentioned you were looking for a way of using stash. Uh, like, oh my gosh, there's so many good baby blanket stash busting type of ideas out there. And because you are a knitter and you appreciate real wool, like I would never give a wool blanket to a non-netter for their baby ever, or a wool anything. <laughs> I would probably do a wool blend or an acrylic, anything super wash. But you, however, know how to handle all these little bits and bobs of real wool. And oh my gosh, I'm excited to see the things that you'll make. And in that stash busting, like any you have, recommend to me and I will add them to that stash busting bundle. But maybe there'll be something in there that you find. I know there's a lot of wrap, shawl, and um, scarf patterns that I thought, boy, if you just extend that a little, that would make a great baby blanket. Um, and then of course, baby knits would be a great way to use up odds and ends to make striping patterns and they take so little, you know. So anyway, I wanted to say that, Leah. I asked you guys, um, do you wear your hand knit socks? Those of you who wear hand knit socks, do you wear them to go like on long walks or to do exercise type things where you're going to be wearing them out? And Leah said, no, you don't want to wear out your hand knits, you know, and also there's just, they're not comfortable. Like you need something a little more cushy for your very delicate feet. Um, Jen does for everything but running. She just said there's too much friction. And she uses like, I think you said sports stance um, socks. So I was interested. I've been wearing mine on walks to walk the dog, which those are not super long. We're just talking 45 minutes for both dogs. You know, like we give the old one um, like 10 minutes really slow and he feels really special and he gets to go first and then we take the big dog the younger one on a a true walk like a 40 minute 30 minute walk so i have been wearing them because i have so many now come on i may as well do that um so yes mary kitchmas i actually this is not a lot longer than these crew socks I could have gone longer with this cuff, but here's the thing. Gosh, I'm just such a dodo. This is what I do. This is what I do. When I hear people say, oh, and, and they really don't say that anymore, but you know, years ago, not as many people were knitting, say 10 years ago, and every once in a while I, hear, I would hear someone say, you're just a master knitter, or oh, you're my inspiration, or you amaze me you amaze me and I would just laugh because I know the truth. <laughs> That's a joke. I want you to look at this. These are both using the same pattern. Now, I only cast on 56 stitches here, but this felt tight and so I, I decided maybe, you know, has, have I gained weight? It's like my foot gained weight in a few weeks, you know? 
maybe I do need a 64 stitch sock. And I did a couple of lace work socks and, and even these were 64 stitches. And you know what? I mean, they're nice and cushy. They've got kind of a slouchy, scrunchy sock feel. I thought maybe that's what I need, but I realized, look at the, chain, the difference in depth of this heel. It's slight, but there's like three or four inches, I mean, three or four rows of, I was misreading my smooth operator pattern. I would look into how to do the gapless pickup, and then I skipped the directions to like knit, I don't know, three or five rows straight, depending on, you know, which width sock you were making. This is five rows straight, and as I did this, this time I like actually sat and took my time and read my directions. I was like, oh my gosh, these fit so uncomfortably across the front of my foot. Like they, they, they're not terrible, but it stretches kind of like this. I think I'm going to pluck them out and redo them. Oh, I don't want to. If they had been a 64 stitch sock, I don't think it would have made such a difference. But this is what I do. I just do doofy things like this. And like, wait, what did I think? I gained weight in my foot in just a few weeks? <laughs> this is why I've been knitting a larger size sock lately. Why am I even pretending that I'm going to teach someone else how to crochet or knit? Um, like a friend asked me, why would I even do that to them? Why would I even pretend this? foot weight. Oh, now I'm going to have all the weirdos. The algorithm is going to send all the weirdos to my video because I said foot weight. It's going to be like um, those little subsections that they auto-generate, you know, most replayed part, foot weight. <laughs> so I will have this much left over of each one plus another mini of the time colorway. And what I thought I would do, and this is a good stash busting technique that I'm sure you've seen people do, maybe you've done it yourself. I would use this for heels, toes, and cuffs again, but I would go ahead and use my self-striping yarn. I would do the same smooth operator pattern, but every other row I would do the solid color. And so I will do these two together. So it's going to break up the striping. It's gonna look more like a micro stripe. But I think it would be really interesting and all of these look good together. I've been trying to use my scraps ASAP. I don't always do it, but I've been trying to. As far as what made me forget how to do this pattern that I've done a million times correctly, I don't know. I mean, my only excuse is perimenopause maybe that's happening. Maybe that's what it is. I've noticed my attention span is crap. Uh, people I love talking to me and I just find I'm thinking about all kind of weird lyrics from the 80s, whatever. Um, I, I think it's hormones. I really do. Because that's not me. Like I'm usually a hyper focus on things, especially relational things. So probably these episodes are scattered and all over the place. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> a similar thing with alternating colors by with alternating colors I don't know if I'll do this but these were on a big sale a while back strolls tonal like it's like an ombre um, sand gradient is what this one is and so it's gonna be a gradient of color very gradual but I thought it would be even more interesting to micro stripe it with some stash Hawthorn. So this is, is it Grant's Pass? No, Rockaway, which has almost a purpley tint to it. Wouldn't these be really pretty? The yellow and purple, those are a nice contrast, like a complementary color. And I think using a solid or more solid tonal to break up like micro stripe this gradient, this is gonna be really cool. I'm, I'm excited to see how that works also as a stash busting project. 
Again, newer stash. This was bought in the last six months, but old stash wasn't. Here's another stash project I did because I needed something kind of mindless with all that was going on. I've been doing those sweater classes with uh, the Laura and Allison party and I had some leftovers from my Hope sweater. I'll just flash a picture on screen because this dog is putting her nose against my iPad and changing my tabs. Don't do that. In my Hope sweater, I used three different colors. I used two um, Wool of the Andes sport weight yarns and then I held this aloft in Kenai. I held it with the sagebrush to kind of make a third color. You know, it marled it. Um, you saw it and you'll see it in the picture. So I decided to hold these two together and do Sophie Scarf from um, Petite Knits. Uh, they were doing bang out of Sophie. It was like a knit along. And the goal was to do it in one weekend. And I planned to bring this and do it during that graduation weekend, but I forgot it. So I, I worked a little on a sock. I didn't have much time, but I did it when I came home. And so here is my Sophie scarf. And I did enough. <laughs> it looks so good with my hoodie, doesn't it? I did an long enough to wrap it double. I think it's, uh, it's, it's pretty comfy knit. Like the mohair is soft, it's not itchy. I would say Wool of the Andy Sport isn't the softest if you're sensitive to um, like wool. Of course, when I'm cold, I'm not at all sensitive to wool. Like if I were going to go run a race, I would. I would be itching like crazy, but who goes running? with a, a chic wannabe, chic scarf. So I don't know if I've even really wrapped this well, but Sophie scarf, I used less, I used um, less than a ball of this and less than a ball of this. Um, I so liked it, though I don't, I like this color, I do, but I really wanted um, a khaki type color or camel, something really classic. And I didn't have it. <laughs> and this is why I suck at stash busting because nitpicks had a, a sale and they were selling their upcycle alpaca wool for half price. And I caved. I got this hazelnut colorway and I am just slightly banging out a Sophie here. I'm gonna do one more Sophie. I have this pattern like stuck in my head. I just did it, so I immediately started on it again. I can say this is incredibly soft compared to the Wool of the Andes Sport. Um, this will feel probably better around my neck. Not that I'm super worried about that, but I do love this natural colorway and I feel like for a scarf that goes right up against your face like this, um, and that you might wouldn't take off right when you get somewhere, this would go with a whole lot of clothing options. Got enough upcycle to make, and this is a sport weight, so um, it didn't take that much to do. Um, I wanna make a double date sweater. It's just a fun drop shoulder type color work, striping, and it's got some texture to the stripes. So I thought I would do it in this upcycle. The main color would be this darker navy. And then my three contrasting colors that I'll do little textural stripes with will be the gray, the green, and the squirrel color. So what do you think? Am I horrible? I think I might be. <laughs> and uh, Hawthorne was on sale and I have looked at this Jade District skein as a Christmas knit for years. It's like two years I've wanted to get it as a Christmas yarn because look how cute. 
This is the kind of green I like and red for Christmas, if I'm gonna do green and red. This is the colors I like. So it was like $10, $11, I got it. That's my confession. I'm not the best role model <laughs> for stash busting. Like um, Metasweet Fibers was saying, oh, maybe you can inspire me. I, I don't know if I can commit to stashing down. I think Leah also isn't quite sure they can commit to stashing down. Well, uh, clearly I'm struggling to commit with stashing down. Um, but we can all celebrate when we do use stash. Um, and like, I figure in a few weeks, this is gonna count as stash and not new knits. For stash busting the new year, it all counts. Stash counts. Um, old stash counts. New stash counts. Newer, newish stash bought to go with old stash counts. That um, double date sweater is actually Gilmore Girls inspired. And I think that's funny because I have been rewatching Gilmore Girls at night some, especially if I'm by myself, um, like nobody gets their feelings hurt if I watch Gilmore Girls without them. Uh, and it made me think of this knit also, a good stash buster. I called it my Rory Needs a Break scarf, but it is a tube chevron scarf. So it's a tube knit with a bunch of Madeline Tosh, like minis, leftovers, and then a bunch of other leftovers from sock yarns. Some were a bunch of unicorn tails that I got way back when I went to that Hohe and Vera Knit America thing at um, a, a Madeline Tosh store in Fort Worth. But then some of it's just older stuff, like this is Jinx yarn, and I think this is like a Joanne brand of yarn. And so I've got a lot of stuff mixed in. This is um, left over from a project I did. So this is uh, possibly Cascade right here, these two. So um, anyway, very fun knit. And I got the, I, I, I'll link you to the blog post where I talk about it, but it is similar to a pattern that was either free or for sale on Madeline Tosh and it was all over Ravelry for a while, but it was a wider knit than I wanted to do. Um, I wanted this to be thin enough that I could do a nice thick chevron and still just use all of a mini skein. So I altered it a little and I talk in the blog post about how I altered it, but this is a huge sweater. And I called it Rory Needs a Break because it was from one of those episodes. It was an episode where she and Paris are in college and they're studying and worn out. I think finals were happening or something. That's why I named it because that's what she was wearing in the episode. But I just thought it would be kind of fun of course, if I do double date now, it's not really stash, but whatever. It would be fun to be re-watching the Gilmore Girls and to make another themed knit. Do you do that when you're watching something knit, uh, yarn or a pattern that makes you think of it or that's sort of themed? It's kind of silly, but it's also kind of fun. I um, I found though, as the years go by, the more I re-watch an episode of the Gilmore Girls, the more they get on my nerves. Like, I don't tolerate them as well now. And I realize this is probably sacrilege to all the women out there. Um, I, I just see how self-absorbed Lorelai is. And I still love her and her mother's um, relationship and the way her and her parents deal with one another and speak to one another. Such funny episodes at their Friday night dinners. But they do get on my nerves a little. I mean, I was furious with what her parents did to enable Rory um, in one season. And then of course, Rory kind of was a brat at the end. Um, I didn't really like her character at all in that reunion season. So I know this is like an unpopular take. This is my unpopular opinion about Gilmore Girls. Yeah. I am so tired of seeing the same titles on everything, um, the same styles of thumbnail 
Oh my God. Have you noticed like the overuse of stock images? Like I'll follow designers or people, maybe they're talking about the uh, real estate industry or home design. Um, sometimes it's on a budget, sometimes it's not, whatever. They're using all these stock video footage now and they just will use the same ones over and over again. Like to discuss, I don't know, like you and your home, it'll show someone folding clothes in their home. I'm like, why? Like, does every single word have to have an image to follow it? Can we, are we not capable of hearing someone speak, processing it, and just listening? Like, have we lost all of our oral skills, <laughs> our listening skills, that we need a visual or an emoji for like every single phrase used? I guess I could do that. I would rather not. That's my unpopular opinion about unpopular opinions. So you guys do seem to be down for stash busting. Denise is down. Um, Leah and Stacy both say that growing that stash too much gives them anxiety. I wouldn't say I feel anxiety, although I feel a little embarrassed, honestly, by the messiness. I showed you some of that yarn and there's some in a closet too. It's pretty messy in that room and that's like the room my husband works in. I mean, Okay, a lot of that was like Christmas stuff mm -hmm. too. That's taking up a lot of space for not a lot of presents. It's still pretty horrible. I'm embarrassed by it more than stressed. Lulu Alex has been is down for stash busting. Has been repurposing yarn for a new Koivua. Um, I think that's how you say it by Caitlin Hunter. And just taking apart a weekender that didn't work right. Um, and knitting something that she's been wanting to make with it for some time has reignited her excitement for knitting some sweaters. So um, I'm excited to see what you will do next, Lulu Alex. Um, Stacy has some odd like single skeins left over from sweater projects that she would like to use somehow and that stash busting bundle would be really helpful probably. Stacy, maybe you'll find some inspiration in that bundle and suggest some things to us, please. That Meadow Sweet Fibers, um, where you were saying you need to focus on stash to avoid <laughs> the temptations. Like you can't commit to stashing down, but you would like, you appreciate the focus because maybe it will help you avoid temptation. I don't know if I'm your girl, I don't know, but I'm gonna try to be. It's gonna be super laid back. We will post our projects. Um, tell the tale of your stash. Tell us where you got it. Um, uh, extra points if it's really old stash. <clears throat> and by points, I just mean, I will really think you're cool. Um, there's not gonna be a whole lot of prizing to this. It's just really mostly about inspiring one another. And I think I noticed that Kendra of The Balance Gain said she was going to be doing something similar through the new year. I don't know if she's doing like a knit along, but um, if you're looking for inspiration online, she is doing the stashing down too. Actually, I've seen several people say they were. I can't remember everybody though. I wanted to show you some suggestions for stash busting projects and I'm gonna do that while we're doing this knit along. I'm gonna consistently show some patterns that you've probably seen, but maybe not, or books, things that kind of will get your creativity flowing for digging up old leftovers and trying to use the leftovers that you have to stash bust. So one of the first things I wanted to, I almost talked about this last time, Virginia, um, who comments here quite a bit, has a, bunch of patterns on Ravelry and a lot of accessories, which always stash busters. Accessories are always great stash busters. But I wanted to show you some of these, like I should have shown them earlier because to me they're very Christmas presenty. Um, these Tams or um, berets and mitten sets that match the color work. Um, let me show you my favorite that I know I want to do. I wanted to do a kit that but it was always sold out do you know that after i committed in my heart i'm not going to buy a kit it's been sold out for a reason i'm going to use stash i got a notification that the kits were back in stock but it's the davern tam isn't that 
just so sweet and vintage looking. I love it. Oh, I really love her color choices here. So I'm hoping <laughs> I will have similar things in my stash because some of these colors I have had. Uh, and here are the matching mitts that go with them. Aren't those just sweet? Oh, I love it. So many things could work there. Those are several different colorways of like uh, Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. But honestly, you could cheat. And you could get a gradient or color changing yarn like a spin cycle-esque type thing. And you could probably just have your main color and use one color to go all the way up the body of it. It would be different. I think I might want to try that just for funsies. So this Hore Cowl and Tam, I'm not sure if I'm saying that ah, correctly. I feel like that would make such a nice Christmas present for someone like me. No, <laughs> it would. <clears throat> I really like Virginia style. Her most recent is Sol. Let me see. Make sure I'm saying it right. Solstitium, and it's using blacker West Country Tweed Erin, which I've never I've never used any blacker yarns. <clears throat> but this is just really great textural textural textural. Three skeins each of two different colors. So three skeins each. That would be more like if you have larger amounts of stash to bust through. But all of these mittens and tam sets, this one's under wood. These are on Ravelry. These would not require too much of any one color if you did just a mitten or just a tam or both. The 14 color wool stock light wrap and wool stock light slouch. Kind of like I did here with this. You don't have to make it as wide as the pattern is. Uh, I love the uneven striping. I'm gonna just show both at once. That, this one, this scarf has been in my stash busting <laughs> uh, tag on Ravelry for some time. I really think those are beautiful colors together. And that's a great use for, say, odd skeins like you have, Stacy. Okay, we've got some fingerless mitts that if you had an odd skein, you could probably get some of these fingerless mitts out of one skein. Lots of sock patterns. Um, ooh, these Clax mittens. These are cute. This is another great, um, it makes me think of a Christmas gift, the mittens. I like the bold contrast too. Wool gams is fairly new and it's like leg warmers, but they're super fun cabled project. This would be good if I had um, a couple of skeins, two or three. Those are in my library and the, the mitten and beret sets that I showed you. And these morning fog socks are so cute. I need to do these right away. And I like her styling here. Just so cute. So I, I wanted to mention them because I've seen her come out with several new patterns, and I think, ooh, I ought to mention that in my next podcast, and then I forget. I have a pattern by Christy Archer for, I, sorry, my dog is trying to eat the labels off of my yarn. Go away, no, no. Oh, I love you. I can't get mad at you. So chic. Christy Archer has her Simply Irresistible Mohair Ascot out, and it is a more of an even um, band with shaping at the ends. And it, her sample has 
Nitpix Luminance Lace, which is silk, paired with mohair. And I think she holds two strands of mohair with the lace. So it gives her about a sport weight. I went looking through my stash and I found that I have in my stash some uh, little basically kits of fingering weight and a mohair that matches and I could use that to knit the ascot and I think that's what I want to do. But it's made me want to do a few accessories like this to bust some stash and as gifts. I think that would be a really nice gift and I, if I do make the mohair ascot for a gift, I want to make sure I'd use some soft yarns and I feel like that would be comfortable on anyone's skin. So that might make a really nice gift to give. Some different books that have a lot of smaller patterns that look kind of like piecework where odds and ends leftovers would work well together in pom-pom. There's the periphery hat. This is the newer episode, uh, episode issue of pom-pom. But you see, you don't need a lot of yardage of any of these colors for this ribbed hat. Halation shawl. When you have a few skeins of a couple of different colors. The Orison hat. I may be saying it wrong. Doesn't seem as though it would require too much. And I like this Sister shawl. There is quite a bit of a main color, but a lot of us have that in our stash. A main color's worth and then piece together various odds and ends. The pom-pom issue that to me was the ultimate for stash busting was block party, the quilt inspired issue. I feel like every pattern in here could be reworked to work with your stash. So there was lists. Not too much of any one colorway. Lucky pieces. These make me think a little of the Brian Smith shawls that I showed you. These are more photos of lucky pieces. Different angles. And being a short sleeved sweater, um, you can make it longer, but the short sleeves make a difference to this one. They have a version that is simply textural and not, it's day spring. But the main version here, you know, knit sideways with the stripes. You could stripe more. This looks like a three color stripe, but you could do, you could stripe it differently to use up what you have. Battenberg was just a huge favorite. So many people have knit versions of this. This is like Katie's perfect granny cardigan. Crooks does require like a main color. And those are very low contrast colors in the work with it. But if you can see, though they're low contrast, if you can see there's quite a bit of other colors. And it's a nice use for little bits. Now this is quite large for a shawl, but it doesn't require a huge amount of any one color. This makes me think of Stacy's one skeins that she has. And you don't have to knit it at exactly these dimensions. And this is one I've been wanting to make, four quarters. And the actual airiness of the fabric looks comfortable even for a Texas, but you see it's got four different colors, four quarters, and the construction is interesting. I hope I'm getting you in the mood for some uh, stash busting projects. This one just came out from Lina. It's the 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. And the focus here is on easier, beginner-friendly patterns that are interesting, even though they're not too technical. 
However, I've noticed that so many of these are involving lots of color and could definitely help you eke out a sweater or an accessory if you don't have like a sweater's quantity of something, like just the striping here. Creative striping or Cipressi. Again, with the striping. Really interesting color work scarf. Not a lot of any one color, and you don't have to use the colors as directed. You could totally change that up and use even less of each color. That's really interesting, and there's a lot of different things happening there, but all while being very beginner friendly. Grand stuff socks but if you don't have enough yarn for one pair but you have like two different colors there you go as far as stripes being a little more interesting there's several striped projects in here there's color blocking too i've noticed a lot more color blocking lately like these duo mitts there's a big Come back of color blocking and sweaters, but this is a um, this is Sylvia Watts Cherry, who does so many interesting things with color. This is stripes, but it's interesting with the garter and the the pocket, the border. Make a good stash buster. I really love this one. Marta, and it's knit sideways. It's very interesting the way it's constructed. That's a very low contrast stripe, but the striping with the garter palette, that's good for not a great amount. You've got short sleeves, cropped. You can use three, four, five different colors if you want. This is using three colors of yarn, and I get, I'm supposing you hold it double. I just got this. You hold it double, like one color double, then you marl, and then you hold the other color double. But there's no reason you have to stop with just three colors. Hilfa is good for tiny little bits of special yarn because these little bobbles, they take center stage. So if you have enough for an interesting background or a solid background or tonal, but then you have little pops of a, a yarn that was maybe special to you and you don't have a lot left. More stripes, pretty straightforward, classic vest shape. It's a very straight across neckline, high neck and straight sleeveless vest. I'm going to show you another book that really makes me think of this, but this looks like a lot of stash yarn. I hope that some of this has got you in the mood for breaking out the stash and even selecting, looking for little bits of a special yarn. Those of you who spin your own yarn, I imagine you have even more attachment to certain colorways that you crafted yourself. That would be a really great use for it. Something like that where you do um, a little embroidery on or you add just colorful baubles or a, a colorful line of color here and there. Even in something that is meant to be, that is presented as a solid color, just doing a, a one stripe or a couple of stripes on a sleeve. So, stash busting the new year. First of all, I'd like for you to share with me what your biggest stash purchasing weaknesses are. I can tell you mine. It's nitpicks. Nitpicks is evil and also really good. These were half off plus I think 20% off if you bought a sweater's worth and a sweater's worth was 10 and it was enough for me to do the double date sweater plus a Sophie scarf and so I got it. It really wasn't spending a lot for a sweater with a lot of, I'm making one with positive ease and a scarf, but 
I'm trying to not buy, you know. Um, that is my weakness. I really think I get Lion Brand points and I've had a lot of gifts I've been knitting with acrylic. So, I mean, Lion Brand was the place to go, but now I've accrued some points and that's, that's really a weakness for me. And mm, the um, knit picks, yeah. So what are your weaknesses when it comes to, say you don't want to increase your stash, but what are your weaknesses? And also, do you have any ideas for using up special little bits of yarn? So like I have, say this much left for another sock. That's not enough to knit a full sock, even if it's kind of a short crew, uh, crew cuff sock. But if I add this color in, which is complimentary, and this was a special colorway to me. I used it in my Find Your Fade. It's Madeline Tosh Reindeer. And it's a nice soft 80-10-10. And I feel like all of these together, that's actually gonna be really interesting. And so I didn't just like toss this or this. It was, it'll, if it works, it will be used in a way that highlights the special nature of it do you have any ideas for highlighting special little leftover bits of yarn? Let us know some of your thoughts, please. And I probably won't get another episode out. I might get one more out before the new year. And if I do, I've got another book I want to show you that's all about using up little bits. I'm excited about it. I've just started reading it. So uh, I hope you have a really good Christmas and holiday season. Bye.